prevention of post-operative neuropathies, patient positioning for laparoscopic and robotic surgery. Incidence of post-operative neuropathies varies depending on the type of surgery, surgical approach, patient position, and length of surgery. The incidence of post-operative neuropathies has been reported from 1.9 to 10% in the literature. A neuropathy is a dysesthesia or parathesia of the distal extremities often associated with complaints of weakness and or physical findings of sensory abnormality, distal motor weakness, and decreased or absent reflexes. The objective of this video is to review appropriate patient positioning for laparoscopic and robotic surgery to avoid postoperative neuropathies. OR bed setup. Our technique involves a bed sheet, an egg crate foam mattress, and boot type stirrups. We recommend setting up the OR table to facilitate tucking of the patient arms and to prevent slippage of the patient when the patient is placed in steep Trendelenburg. The brackets are placed symmetrically on the distal end of the head of the bed where the patient's hips will be located, and the stirrups are placed within the bracket. We prefer the use of yellow fin stirrups for dorsal lithotomy positioning. A single bed sheet is placed across the head of a bare table, and an egg crate foam mattress is placed over the sheet. This setup prevents the need for taping of the patient to the bed or the use of shoulder braces to prevent slippage of the patient when the patient is placed in Trendelenburg. Lithotomy positioning. The patient is positioned on the bed such that the buttocks is located within the groove between the head of the bed and the foot of the bed. The legs are placed within the stirrups simultaneously while lifting beneath the patient's knee and the patient's ankle. The straps of the boot are tightly secured bilaterally and the foot of the bed is removed to allow for access to the vagina. The legs are positioned appropriately when the legs are symmetric with the knee and the foot aligned with the contralateral shoulder and the buttocks located at the edge of the bed to allow for manipulation of instruments within the vagina. Ideal positioning has the boot position and the flexion indicator on the stirrups located symmetrically. With low lithotomy positioning, the hips should be flexed with a trunk to thigh angle at approximately 170 degrees and never more than 180 degrees. Arm tucking. Arms are tucked at the patient's side to allow the surgeon to have more room to operate during laparoscopic and robotic surgery. The arm boards are removed. Excess egg crate foam is removed from the patient's side to allow for tucking. Cushioning is placed over the elbow and the wrist. The bed sheet is lifted up over the patient arm and tucked beneath the mattress pad with the patient's hands pronated. The excess egg crate foam is placed beneath the patient's hand. Do not allow the arms to hang over the side of the bed. If the patient is obese and there is not sufficient room to tuck the arms at the side without the arm hanging over the side of the bed, the arms can be tucked as described with the arm boards placed beneath the arm parallel to the bed to support the tucked arm. After one arm is tucked, the process is repeated on the opposite side. Again, excess egg crate foam is removed. Cushioning is placed beneath the patient's elbow and wrist. The bed sheet is lifted over the patient's arm 
and the bed sheet is tucked beneath the mattress pad and the excess egg crate foam is placed beneath the patient's hand. Trendelenburg Positioning Once peritoneal access has been obtained, the patient can be placed in the maximum Trendelenburg position as allowed. Again, the patient is not taped to the bed and no shoulder braces are used. The technique of using a bed sheet and the egg crate foam is sufficient to prevent significant slippage of the patient. To demonstrate that the patient does not slip significantly when placed in Trendelenburg, a tape marker is placed above the patient's head, and when the patient is placed in Trendelenburg, the patient's head location and relationship to the tape marker is not significantly changed. Again, when the patient is placed in steep Trendelenburg, it is important that the patient does not slip significantly on the bed so that the buttocks remains on the edge of the bed for better manipulation of instruments within the vagina. Safe patient positioning can be performed in less than five minutes. Safe patient positioning can be performed efficiently and does not have to be a lengthy process. Here, we demonstrate an unedited positioning of a patient from the supine position to the lithotomy with Trendelenburg position. This process takes approximately four minutes. The yellow fin stirrups are placed symmetrically on the railing at the head of the bed at the level of the patient hip. The stirrups are confirmed to be at the same height on both sides and the legs are placed within the boot simultaneously, lifting beneath the knee and beneath the ankle. The straps of the boot are secured and the foot of the bed is removed. Again, the positioning of the foot within the stirrup is confirmed and the weight of the leg is placed on the heel and not on the patient's calf. The knee and foot are confirmed to align with the patient's contralateral shoulder. The patient's hips are confirmed to be flexed at 170 degrees. The arms are carefully tucked at the sides. The excess egg crate foam is removed from the patient's side and cushioning is placed around the patient's elbow and wrist. The bed sheet is lifted over the patient's arm and the sheet is tucked beneath the OR bed mattress. The excess egg crate foam is placed beneath the patient's fingers. Two people work together to tuck each arm with one person holding the arm and the other person lifting the bed sheet. Then one person lifts the OR bed mattress and the other person tucks the sheet beneath the OR bed mattress. Again, if the patient is too wide to have the arms resting on the OR table, then the arm boards can be placed parallel to the OR table to support the tucked arm. Having two people work together to tuck each arm allows for better and more efficient arm tucking. Finally, the patient is able to be placed in steep Trendelenburg and maintains her position on the OR table. We will now present a case-based review of some of the neuropathies experienced with gynecologic surgery. First, a case of wrist drop and hand numbness. A 32-year-old underwent an emergent laparoscopy for ovarian torsion. The patient was placed in dorsal lithotomy position with Allen stirrups 
and her arms on arm boards. On post-op day number one, the patient complained of left wrist drop and hand numbness. The patient was incorrectly positioned with her arm abducted greater than 90 degrees. Abducting the arm more than 90 degrees from the body can result in a stretch or compression injury to the brachial plexus. Correct positioning has the arm abducted less than 90 degrees. An alternative to arm boards is to tuck the patient's arms at the side. The next case is a 35-year-old who had a laparoscopic myomectomy performed. The case was uncomplicated, but postoperatively, the patient experienced left arm weakness and numbness. The patient had shoulder braces placed to prevent slippage on the table. However, the brace was placed too medial on the shoulder, resulting in a compression injury to the brachial plexus. Correct placement of the brace should be over the acromioclavicular joint. An alternative to using the shoulder brace, such as using an egg crate foam mattress to prevent slippage, is a better option in reducing the risk of a brachial plexus injury. The next case is a 20-year-old pianist who underwent a laparoscopic right salpingectomy for an ectopic pregnancy. At her post-operative appointment, she complained of being unable to play the piano, secondary to numbness and weakness of the fourth and fifth fingers. The patient had an ulnar nerve injury from improper tucking of the arm. When the arms are tucked, the forearm should be pronated so that the olecranon groove is rotated outward, protecting the ulnar nerve from compression against the OR table. Conversely, when the arms are not tucked and when they are placed on arm boards, the arms should be supinated to prevent compression of the ulnar nerve on the arm board. Our last case is a 45-year-old who underwent a robotic hysterectomy. The patient's legs were adjusted during the case to prevent clashing with the robotic arms. On post-op day number one, the patient went to stand up out of bed and fell down to the ground. The patient had a femoral nerve injury from excessive hip abduction and overextension of the hip. The hip should be flexed no greater than 180 degrees and the hips should be abducted such that the thigh to thigh angle is no greater than 90 degrees. In conclusion, we present a review of proper positioning of patients for laparoscopic and robotic surgery. Work as a team with all of the operating room care providers to safely position patients. Preventing postoperative neuropathies is everyone's job. Again, we recommend the use of a bed sheet with an egg crate foam mattress with boot type stirrups. The hips should be flexed approximately 170 degrees with the knee and foot aligning with the contralateral shoulder and the hips abducted 90 degrees or less. The arm should be tucked at the side with cushioning with the hands pronated. This technique can help reduce a patient's risk of a postoperative neuropathy. Thank you for your attention.